Hello, so welcome to chapter 19. We're going to talk about disorders associated with the immune system. I'm trying to put my page down here. So our learning objectives for chapter 19 include hypersensitivity, which we have four types. I am briefly going to describe in the second video the definition of autoimmune diseases, but we're not going to talk about them. I decided not to use uh, this content for the, this course since autoimmune diseases are more related to immunology and less to microbiology, but we're going to talk a little bit about reaction to transplantation okay, and the role of HLA. Then we're going to talk about AIDS a little deeper and understand the disease. So let's start with talking about how when you were a kid, what happens when you have a hypersensitivity. What happens is we call them allergy, right? A hypersensitivity and allergy are synonyms. But then there are theories that prove or suggest with good arguments the children that grow up in, on farms, they have less allergies than children that grow in urban settings because they are more exposed to pollen, to nature, to the soil where the microbes are than whoever lives in an urban setting. And this would lead to less allergies. So microbial exposure is super important when you're a kid because it will teach your immune system. Remember when we learned the immune system and how the B and T cells have to learn their role as uh, cells that recognize and attack or recognize and don't attack um, what's in the environment, right? So when you have an allergy, you actually attack something from the environment that is not really pathogenic and that causes a hyper reaction from your body and we're going to understand why um, and this is unwanted right so let's talk a little bit about what are the four types of allergy or hypersensitivity so we have here this table just to summarize what we want to learn for this chapter so n num type 1 or anaphylactic reaction Usually, the signs for this reaction, for it to be detected in a patient, is really short. In less than 30 minutes, you can see signs here. How does this happen? So what you have is, you always have the B cell, right, making antibodies. But the antibodies in this case are going to be against something, for example, pollen is one example. You can have a anaphylactic reaction to pollen. This is happening because the antibodies that are being produced against pollen are of the type IgE. And IgE is a type of antibody that is found in lungs, skin, and general mucous membranes. Remember the mucous membranes inside your mouth, inside your genitalia, in the urethra, um, inside your nose. So <clears throat> inside any hollow organ, but the, the door of entry here is usually going to be the digestive system or by inhalation, the respiratory system. Okay, And then what happens is that mast cells, so this is a mast cell, which are cells that have a lot of granules and we're going to talk about these granules now <clears throat> they have a little receptor for IgE so IgE binds to this receptor and these triggers mast cells to degranulate so these little granules open like by exocytosis to the environment <clears throat> These granules are composed of histamine. Histamine will increase the permeability of blood vessels, mostly of capillaries. 
And then we also have leucotrienes, which will increase the ability of smooth muscle to contract. Okay? So which was most smooth muscle is going to contract here? Mostly in bronchial. So here you can have bronchial constriction. And then we also have release of prostaglandins. Prostaglandins. Prostaglandins also act in smooth muscle, but they also induce mucus secretion. So with this said, this causes a hyperreactive response, right? You start to have mucus in the nose, for example, uh, <clears throat> excess of secretion. This vasopermeability leads fluid to leak from your blood vessels, and then your blood vessels get um, more empty and that decreases the blood pressure okay <clears throat> you also can have here these substances mostly histamine can cause vasodilation and vasodilation will drop the blood pressure also so uh, an effect of all this together is a decrease in blood pressure as a last effect and if this is localized, you're not going to feel that that much, but if it's systemic, so when is it localized? When it's localized, I'm gonna write here, local, then you would have um, only reactions that are, for example, in your nose, uh, on your face, on the skin, but nothing that will show as like a more serious reaction. But then here, you can have a systemic reaction. Okay, so we're going to use examples now. So the systemic reaction is what can lead to shock, is what we call anaphylactic shock. So this is one example, okay, of anaphylaxis type or type 1 hypersensitivity. The local reactions, the local here, are going to be these examples here. Hay fever uh, is that type of reaction that you always have that runny nose, that itchy nose, right? Also called allergic rhinitis. Hives, which is mostly on skin and it itches a lot and makes the skin really red. And asthma, so these are examples of type 1. When we think about type 2, um, we are going to Think we're gonna look here at signs showing between 5 and 12 hours okay and then it happens by your red blood cells you, mostly the red blood cells being attacked by your leukocytes okay so think that you have a red blood cell here so the, 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 the example, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the example here because then you're going to understand better, is blood mismatch. So when you have a transfusion and that leads to um, a reaction that is not favorable, that with, because you received the wrong blood, then this is what's going to happen. So in this case, the red blood cells, let's say you have a blood type A. So that means you have an antigen A on your cells, right? Your B cells are going to make antibody, anti-antigen B, right? Because you don't have B. So if you receive a blood here, this is the donor, red blood cell that has an antigen B because somebody gave you the wrong blood, your antibodies are going to bind here and that's going to be connected to a macrophage and you're going to destroy that cell and that's going to cause an inflammatory reaction and agglutination in the blood. 
okay so when you have the cytotoxic reaction it usually happens in a situation like this you receive the wrong blood and then of course please go back and review if you're a type B you're gonna have antibodies anti A if you're a type AB then you're not gonna have any antibodies and you are the universal uh, receiver recipient and if you're a type O which means you don't have A or B then you're the universal donor so this is one situation where you have a cytotoxic hypersensitivity the second situation is a disease that I'm gonna write here so this was one and now two that is called hemolytic disease of the newborn what is this disease? the mom is RH negative remember this is another antigen which is called antigen D that is present in the blood right so if the mom is negative and the dad is positive or at least heterozygous for positive the baby so this mom can have a baby oops, that is R H positive that means this baby has the antigen D right this mom with the first baby nothing is gonna happen so this is the, the second situation right and this was the first situation if this mom has a second kid second baby then the second baby being RH positive meaning having the antigen D the mom is already sensitized because during the first pregnancy it, she learned how to make antibodies anti-D because the, they both have the antigen, right? Both babies. So these antibodies are circulating in her blood and they get in touch with this baby number two anti-D and they attack the baby's RBCs that's why it's called hemolytic. It breaks down the baby's R, uh, red blood cells. How do you prevent this? By administering something, is a medicine that is called Rogam, which is basically these antibodies. And somehow, it's not absolutely no, but somehow this teaches the mom not to produce even more anti-D and not to attack the baby. Okay? So this is the treat. Now we're going to talk about the type 3. So type 3 is the immune complex formation. When you form immune complex, or well, let's talk about how, many, how long does it take. Here you have between 3 and 8 hours to see signs. Okay? When you form immune complex, um, that means antibodies connect to antigens, right? and these together is what we call an immune complex. Cool. When an immune complex is formed, this activates the complement system. Complement activation. And with that, this induces inflammation. As we know that any time complement is activating, is getting activated, you're going to have an inflammatory process. This is not good because you didn't expect. These immune complexes can happen, for example, sometimes some uh, toxoid vaccines can cause the formation of these immune complexes with the toxoid the antibody binds and doesn't unbind and those uh, complexes get to deposit in places like the glomeruli in the in the kidney causing this inflammation okay and this is not favorable okay it's not a very common reaction but it could happen so I'm gonna call here Arthas reaction 
which is what I just explained to you. There is also um, a type of autoimmunity where immune complexes are formed and then also this um, complexes can deposit in other places like joints so usually you see in joints also anywhere that you have basement membrane these immune complexes can deposit so it's usually under the epithelial tissue okay and then they cause that inflammation usually you have action of neutrophils here which will end up destroying part of the tissue the delay type or type 4 takes around 24 to 48 hours for you to see signs that's why it's called delayed right so what happens here one typical example here it could happen to latex to metals but one very typical and classic example is the poison ivy reaction so what happens is that you have the plant right this is the poison ivy it's three leaves right and the poison ivy will touch your skin and there is a component of your skin that combines with a component of the plant so when these two things combine it forms a molecule that your t-cells recognize okay and when they recognize they start producing what cytokines and this reaction takes a long time to go away because t-cell response is not quick and it lasts much longer remember when we talk last long time remember uh, when we talked about um, vaccination when you have a t-cell response in a vaccination like for example the one that um, is acquired by uh, whole antigens attenuated the response is very long lasting right because you have a t-cell response so anytime you have um, t-cell response it's going to last much longer so that's why this type of hypersensitivity is going to be burning on that skin for a long time. What I did not mention to you here is that this only happens in the second exposure to the allergen. The allergen is always, when I say allergen, I mean the antigen, right? So in the first exposure, nothing happens. And then when you have the second exposure, then you're going to have this release of cytokine through T-cells in situations like contact with poison ivy or it could happen, like I said, with other materials uh, that you can get this reaction. Another example here is the tuberculin test. Tuberculin is um, a protein that comes from the mycobacterium, tuberculosis. And when you inject that in the subcutaneous tissue, what happens is that that mycobacterium ends up, uh, that protein ends up causing a cytokine, cytokine release from T cells. So that's also a delay type of response. That's why it takes around 24 to 48 hours for you to see the tuberculin reaction on the skin. Just one thing I forgot to mention the only way to try to avoid an anaphylactic reaction that you know for example that a patient is prone to is if you do something that is called desensitization and what is that you start administ administering the antigen in the subcutaneous and sometimes you just need to use many antigens because you don't really know which one is causing the reaction, right? And then after many administrations, your immune system learns how to start producing IgG and no more IgE. And with IgG, 
you're not going to have this mast cell reaction. That's going to stop. I hope this makes sense. I'll talk to you again for the second part of chapter 19. Bye.